Hello and welcome to Hadoop Tutorials at Learning Journal. Authentication is the first level of security for any system. It is all about validating the identity of a user or a process. In a simple sense, it means verifying a username and password, right? In this video, we will try to understand the need for secure authentication method and its implementation in a Hadoop cluster. In a secure system, the users or the processes are required to identify themselves. Then the system needs to validate the identity. The system must ensure that you are the one who you claim to be. The authentication doesn't end there. Once your identity is validated, it must flow further down to the system. Your Identity must propagate to the system with your every action or to every resource that you access on the system. This kind of authentication is not only needed for users, but it is also mandatory for every process or service. In the absence of an authentication, a process or a user can pose itself to be a trusted identity and gain access to the data. Most of the systems implement this capability. For example, your Linux operating system is capable of validating your credentials and propagating it further down. Now, coming back to a Hadoop cluster. Hadoop works on a group of computers. Each computer executes an independent operating system. OS authentication works with the boundary of an operating system. But Hadoop works across those boundaries. So, ideally, Hadoop should have a network based authentication system. But unfortunately, Hadoop doesn't have a built in capability to authenticate users and propagate their identity. So, the community had following options develop an authentication capability into Hadoop or integrate with some other system that is purposefully designed to provide the authentication capability over a networked environment. They decided to go with the second option. So, Hadoop uses Kerberos for authentication and identity propagation. You may ask a question here. Why Kerberos? Why not something else like SSL certificates or OAuth? Well, OAuth was not there at that time and they give two reasons over SSL. Performance and Simplicity Kerberos performs better than SSL and managing users in Kerberos is much simpler. To remove a user, we just delete it from Kerberos. Whereas, revoking an SSL certificate is a complicated thing. Kerberos is a network authentication protocol created by MIT. It eliminates the need for transmission of passwords across the network and removes the potential threat of an attacker sniffing the network. I mean, Kerberos doesn't need you to send your password across the network. To understand the Kerberos protocol and how it works, you must understand few jargons and components of Kerberos system. Let me introduce you to all of them. The first one is KDC. We call it the Key Distribution Center. KDC is the authentication server in Kerberos environment. Most of the cases, it resides on a separate physical server. We can logically divide the KDC into three parts. A database, an authentication server, and a ticket granting server. The database stores user and service identities. These identities are known as principles. KDC database also stores other information like an encryption key, ticket validity duration, expiration date, etc. The Kerberos authentication service authenticates the user and issues a ticket granting ticket. If you have a valid TGT, means authentication server has verified your credential. TGS is the application server of KDC, which provides service ticket. Before accessing any service on Hadoop cluster, you need to get a service ticket from TGS. Ok, now you are equipped with basic minimum Kerberos terminology. So, we can move to the next question. 
Let's assume you want to list a directory from HDFS on a Kerberos enabled Hadoop cluster. First thing, you must be authenticated by Kerberos. On a Linux machine, you can do it by executing the kinit tool. The kinit program will ask you for the password. Then, it will send an authentication request to Kerberos authentication server. On a successful authentication, the AS will respond back with a TGT. The kinit will store the TGT in your credentials cache. So, now you have your TGT, that means, you have got your authentication and you are ready to execute a Hadoop command. Let's say you run following command. So, you are using Hadoop command. That's a Hadoop client, right? Now the Hadoop client will use your TGT and reach out to TGS. The client approaches TGS to ask for a service ticket for the name node service. The TGS will grant you a service ticket and the client will cache the service ticket. Now, you have a ticket to communicate with the name node. So, the Hadoop RPC will use the service ticket to reach out to name node. They'll again exchange the tickets. Your ticket proves your identity and name node's ticket determines the identification of the name node. Both are sure that they are talking to an authenticated entity. We call this a mutual authentication. The next part is authorization. If you have permissions to list the root directory, the name node will return the results back to you. I have already covered HDFS authorization in earlier video. If you are interested, you can check the video for Hadoop file permissions and ACLs. That's all about Kerberos authentication in Hadoop. You might be interested in a step-by-step -step demo for setting up a Kerberized cluster. I'll bring that to you in a future video. Thank you for watching Learning Journal. Subscribe for more videos and updates. Keep learning and keep growing.